We have a new sponsor and an old friend joining Envy Pillow here, Sierra Sill. With two rare patents and a money back guarantee, Sierra Sill, available at Shoppers Drug Mart, London Drugs and Health Food Stores, is the natural mineral joint pain remedy you need. Go to sierrasill.com, S I E R R A S I L.com, and use the code GF for 10% off. Hello and welcome to episode 23 of Gracefully and Frankly. I'm Lisa Brandt. <laughs> I'm Erin Davis. 23 and me. And you've done that genetic testing thing, right? You've done all that? Like the DNA? I did. And they keep sending me emails going, hey, we have news of whether you have this gene for something you've never heard of before. Log in and find out. And I never have it. Do you, do you really want to know that? Jeez. Well, kind of. I mean, once you've done it, it's like whatever. Anyway, we are so easily sidetracked. I got a feeling it's going to be one of those episodes where we are all over the place. But that's okay, too, (laughs) because it's the way conversations go, right? Squirrel. Those are the worst conversations. You remember interviews with people that you would watch on TV and you'd know they were so scripted because the person would drop something and then the interviewer would just move on and you're going... Wait a second, they're just saying that they're related to Barack Obama and you didn't ask anything about that? I don't know. And I don't know why I picked Barack Obama. But if you are related to Barack Obama, Lisa, just, you know, drop in any time. No, but I miss Barack Obama, though, so I don't mind hearing about him. Yeah. Just as a guy. We are going to talk about being overwhelmed, though, because I'm I'm being overwhelmed by something that I actually feel a little embarrassed to share because it's a good thing, right? Yeah. But it's still overwhelming and it's affecting my life in a negative way, which is silly when you find out what it is. Don't judge (laughs) it till we actually hear you and then we are judging you like crazy. You know, one of the most dismissive things that people can say is, oh, first world problem. Yeah, yeah. Besides being condescending to the rest of the world and thinking we live in the first, but it's just like, okay, so my problems don't matter because I have indoor plumbing. You know, stop it. Right. That's a good point. Something shouldn't bug me on a flight because I happen to be sitting in a wider seat. Let's not be judgmental. Let's not be dismissive. Let's just listen in and whatever you have to say, I'm listening, as Fraser Crane used to say, right? Okay. You're listening and are you comfortable with your Envy Pillow? I am. And we're so grateful that people are listening in comfort because Envy Pillow has been here with us on Gracefully and Frankly from the jump, as the kids say. And we couldn't ask for a higher quality partner in Kathy and Kim and the integrity of this company. It's not like people who sell pillows and have a huge markup. These pillows are the highest quality. They're beyond sustainable. They put 100% natural certified latex, undyed cotton, natural pure copper, eco-loving 10 cell that you mentioned last week, silk, just the highest quality ingredients so you can have the highest quality sleep. And you just check it all out at Envy, that's E-N-V-Y, pillow.com, and use the code GF, as in great friends, to get 10% off anything you want or see that you'd like to try. Okay, so away we go. Episode 23 and me. I mean, and Lisa and you and us. Me too. Yay. (laughs) Hi, it's Lisa again. I just want to let you know that in this episode, I talk about a personal experience that may be triggering for you, and I wouldn't want it to get you by surprise. So it's not in detail, but I just wanted to let you know that it's coming. Thanks. So my therapist has moved offices, Aaron, Mm -hmm. and he's in this beautiful building, but it's completely different than the last place. And the procedure is he comes out and gets me and I follow him back to his office. And then we have my therapy session. And he came out to get me in this new office. And I guess he said something, but I'm so used to not hearing things. People mumble and there's noise. And I just didn't pay any attention to it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Because as I walked down the hall behind him, he walked into a doorway and pushed the door and I saw that it was the washroom. (laughs) Oops. So he's inside trying to close the door and I'm on the other side looking at him expectantly. And he's like, Lisa, my office is over there. Oh, my God. I need to go to the bathroom. (laughs) Oh, 
Oh, it was mortifying. We laughed so hard. Oh, good, because I was thinking, did you spend the first half of your session, your precious session, trying to say, um, okay, so here's what really happened. I'm so mortified. I'm this <laughs> and that. Oh, my God. That's so... Luckily, I have a good enough relationship with him that I could just say, oh, I feel like an idiot. And he laughed, and we talked about mistakes people make all the time, and that he had said, just wait for me in my office. I'm just going to be a minute or whatever. And I, we walked by it, but I didn't know it. Anyway, yeah, I was just so embarrassing, but I was actually thinking about that when we started talking about it. Don't take up too much time. This costs you money. This costs you money. So <laughs> yeah, right, 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 right. <laughs> but the session in itself, it helped you because you've been feeling overwhelmed lately and not without a certain amount of guilt because it's something that should be bringing you joy. And that's such a collision, such a conflict. Yeah. And it's not just the one thing, right? It never is. I mean, I've got other things going on, personal things, and uh, my marriage is fine. Don't worry about that. Oh, good. It's always stuff that's out of your control that makes you feel overwhelmed. And I know control is not even possible. I understand all that. And it's an embarrassment of riches, really, that we're going to spend three weeks in Italy. Now, why would anyone feel overwhelmed by that? I should be doing a happy dance eating pasta and and celebrating the whole time. But it's a little complicated because it involves a cousin from London, England. Mm -hmm. It's gotten longer. It's three weeks. It was going to be two. And I know, poor me, three weeks, right? I mean... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is complicated because of the time difference in England and her being away sometimes and us not being around and trying to figure out how we're going to bring this together. We were going to go on a tour but you can't take a tour and have somebody come on partway through. And so it's just been really complicated. That's the only word I can come up with. And I just want to get the darn thing done um, oh. and book so I don't have to worry about it. And Derek says, oh, we can just wing it when we get there and figure out where we're going to stay. And it's like, no, every place I'm looking, it's like we have two rooms left. We have one room left. Like, you know, we have to nail this down. So mm. we've got about half of it booked now. We have our flights and everything booked. But um, I feel so much better that it's coming together. And was there any advice or anything that you got that helped you to put this all into perspective? Not like, hey, I'm going to Italy for three weeks, but here's what I need to do to feel less overwhelmed or to feel less frenzied about all this? No, actually, the advice is to listen to my intuition at the first moment when I'm agreeing to do something I don't want to do. Mm. So... I really don't want to go for three whole weeks, but we can't claw it back to one. Again, I understand. Oh, poor Lisa, yeah, going yeah, to Italy yeah. for three weeks. Yeah, I understand. You know, let's hold her a tag sale. <laughs> no, it's more about listening to my intuition in the moment and not getting myself into something that will make me feel overwhelmed. So that bird has flown. So next time, hopefully. Yeah, because you were going to have to eat it, right? You were going to have to eat that whole nut yeah. of the expense that you had laid out. Yeah. And so we're still going to have to eat a little bit of it to cancel one of the things that we had booked. And so I hate wasting money and I hate making mistakes like that. But things happen and it's just the way it is. So we move on. Yeah, it has been kind of overwhelming, only because my personality, I think, I, I just, I want to get the ducks in a row. I want to know where I'm going. I want to know what's happening a little bit. And I know that we can't just go and wing it because I'm not staying on the floor of a hostel with 26 other mm. people in a room in a shared bathroom. It's not going to happen. So I want to yeah. know where I'm laying my head at night. I totally get that. There's a saying that I came across a while back and I posted it on Facebook and there were a few people who disagreed with it. But I think it applies here. Don't say yes when you're really happy and don't say no when you're miserable. Hmm. Taking the time to step back and say, let me get back to you on this. Yes. I can relate to that. It's giving yourself time. But you know what? You've come out of this wiser, right? And the whole thing about your intuition is so true. Why don't we listen to that more? Well, and this is one of the things I talked about with my therapist. And when I was a kid, I was always told to ignore my intuition. It's like Uncle Danny touches me funny. And it would be like, oh, don't say that. He would never do something like that. You know what I mean? So my intuition was always being gaslit. And I was always being told it wasn't correct. No, what we think is correct. Don't make a fuss. Don't 
say something, you know, that's going to upset an adult, whatever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's where it comes from for me. And I think it does for a bunch of people. I don't think I'm the only one. Oh, absolutely. If you're not being heard, you don't think that that inner voice is worth listening to. Did that, did that happen to you with that unnamed uncle? Yeah. Yeah, it did. And he wasn't an uncle. He, they just called him uncle. Yeah, it did. Yep. And I was nine years old and, um, and my mother just didn't believe me. And it wasn't until years and years later, it made sense to both her and my dad over the way he had behaved, distancing himself from them. And here's a guy who coached a girl's baseball team and didn't have a daughter. Oh, so you weren't alone. No. Wow. You weren't alone in your experiences. Oh, no, not at all. Not at all. So it's really confusing for a kid to feel like you know something deep within your heart and to have the people who are closest to you say, no, you're wrong. I came home one day, this guy had tried to get me to get in his car with candy. Oh, come on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just t- literally the the cliche. Yeah. And he's saying, I know your dad, I know your mom and all this stuff. And I just started booking it for home and I ran as fast as I could. Of course, I was a little kid. I didn't get a license number. I didn't get any of that. I run home and I said to my dad, this man tried to get me in the car. He tried to give me candy. And dad said, well, did you get in the car? And I said, no. And he goes, well, then what's the big deal? Oh my God. Now, 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 can you imagine the 911 calls, the all point bulletins? Yeah. But, you know, it wasn't, it just, you know, he says, you're not dumb. You didn't get in the car. Well, you don't have to be dumb. You just might like candy. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Or your parents know me. That's also one of the oldest tricks in the book, too. Or help me find my lost dog. Or I need directions. Yes. Who asks a nine-year-old for directions? Yep. Oh, Lisa, I'm so, so sorry that that happened to you. And you are so right. You are not alone, but that doesn't make it any less traumatic for you. Wow. Well, and that's where the intuition thing comes from, the swallowing the intuition and being told it isn't correct. And it was almost always to do with the behavior of adults. Don't embarrass us. Don't make a fuss. You know, you're enough trouble as it is, kid. Don't be making it worse, right? That's right. right. So, uh, yeah. I have to tell you that I had no intention of telling you that story today. It just bubbled right up. Well, thank you for that, for all of us who are listening to you, because to be open like that is a service. And maybe somebody listening is going to you know, listen a little more carefully to not only their own intuition, but to the less powerful people in their lives who are trying to tell them something without shutting them down. Yeah. And, you know, kids aren't a pain in the neck for no reason. There's something going on with them, mental health or something. And I'm sure some kids make up stories, but um, I would wager to guess most don't. So believe them. Wow. Uh, We are going places that I never thought we'd go because what we just discussed, which was you not being heard as a child saying, you know, someone tried to lure me into their car and being told, hey, good for you. You didn't get in the car. Let's go back to the hockey game. It made me think of something in my family, which brings up so many conflicting feelings. I have a sibling, and when we were all kids, Mm. we had cousins that we were close with. I mean, not Arkansas close, but close. Right. And um, and so we thought it was so cute that this sister and this cousin were of a similar age and both so cute together. And now I'm thinking of this, and there are pictures that at a country place that we had, it sounds so posh. We lived out on a farm, and the cows were always on our property from the next-door neighbor. It wasn't posh. Right. There was a wedding staged, a wedding staged between, let's see, so she was probably five and this cousin, they were dressed up under a great big elm tree. We staged a wedding. Right. And this was parents involved because there were pictures taken and we were kids who didn't have cameras. And it was just a fun thing. But now I'm looking back at it and going, well, how effed up is this? Because about 10 years later... My sister told us about this person sexually assaulting her. 
Oh. And my mom couldn't believe it. And her sibling, who was the parent of this cousin, couldn't believe it. So my sister was left completely out in the cold, not being believed, and now still living with the aftermath of this because we are still in contact with this cousin because his parent was a beloved figure in our lives, still is. This is so completely effed up. And it just puts a spotlight, Lisa. What were we thinking? Yeah. And we can say, yeah, it was a different time. But was it? Well, I also think that, I mean, the denial from the parents sounds like what happened when I talked to my parents about, about being touched. Exactly. You have to think that they feel a sense of responsibility. And that's one of the reasons they deny too, right? It's like, well, I'm the parent. I'm supposed to be watching these kids or whatever. This can't be happening under my watch. It just didn't happen. I'm a better parent than that. Right. And there's all of the parents who... In the case of the person you call uncle, who was a family friend who had that mm. vaulted position in the family that he could be called uncle, how bad was my judgment letting this person into our families? Like, how did I not see this about this person yeah. who you said coached a girls baseball team but didn't have any daughters? I mean, is that not a red flag or is it like, wow, what a great community person. He doesn't have a daughter, but he wants to make this team better or make his town better. And there are people like that. There are people in big brothers and big sisters who do not have children, but devote themselves. There are people in the clergy. We know there are enough of those bad ones, but there are good people. And do we try and see the good in people? And it blinds us when it turns out that they really are the worst that we couldn't even imagine. Sometimes I look back on the era of our childhoods and think that we were asleep or something. The red flags that we know now ought to have gone up just didn't. This man not only coached a girl's team and didn't have a daughter, but we saw him pick up his son and throw him from one room to another. Oh. And that was the point where, I can't believe it took that, but that was the point that I said, I'm never going back to their house. I'm never going to see that again. Right. But, you know, people didn't intervene either. Like, my parents weren't there to see that happen. But I was a helpless kid. And again, telling them that this had happened. And so my parents assumed that he maybe gave the kid a little shove. He picked him up over his head and threw him into another room. Good Lord. You know, this guy was just a POS from the word go. But he was smart enough to straighten up and fly right in front of his adult friends. So... And I, maybe that's part of the problem is that he saved his worst behavior just for children because that's what predators do, right? Right, right. Um, I think that there is such a generational difference now. There will be people, you know, hopefully half our age who are listening to this, who can't even imagine that our neighbors had permission to discipline us. Yeah. That if we weren't behaving at our friend's house. Yep. If that wooden spoon came out, we had it coming. If the teacher wanted to wallop us or the principal, usually the principal, you have to have that position of honor in order to mete out corporal punishment, then obviously we had it coming and there was no question of that because we did so honor authority, mm -hmm. yes, but also we trusted our neighbors. And, you know, I know now some of my parents' best friends, there were drunks down the street, there were even in the nice treed neighborhoods, there was all kinds of bad stuff going on. And so we were at their discretion yep. as to how we behaved. How was that okay? I know it takes a village, but if the worst person in the village decides to go after you, and I know that this podcast, this episode is going in directions we didn't expect. And you know what? You come here for a bit of everything, but this is the nature of friendship. We sit over a coffee and when we think we're going to be talking about why my peonies aren't blooming this year, yeah. we get into the real stuff, what's really there. So what is it? And when did the tides turn, do you think, that we started to say, no, you, you can't hit my kid. Send them home. And whether I'm going to discipline my child, that's not up to you. When did that happen, Lisa? And does it still go on? I don't know. I just know that if something happened now where somebody dared to discipline somebody else's kid, it would be a massive problem. I always seem to sit on an airplane in front of the kid that's kicking the chair. Maybe you do too. I don't know. Yeah. No, no, you're up yeah. in, I'm in steerage. So, but... Uh, <laughs> 
That's the problem with your trip to Italy. Can That's we just start with that? No. <laughs> okay. And the etiquette is you're supposed to talk to the parent. You know, last time it happened, the kid was probably, I'd say, 14. Old enough to know better. Yeah. And I just turned around and I said, hey, did you know every time you push your foot into the seat, it's pushing me out of the seat? He's like, I'm not pushing your seat. But his mom was two seats away. And of course, I couldn't see her. The seats are high and I'm vertically challenged. And and anyway, I heard the mother go, yes, you have been and you need to stop. And I thought, thank goodness, because if she didn't back me up and she could have taken offense and, and thought, don't talk to my kid like that. There are people like that. How dare you? Because they think that their children are absolutely blameless in everything. And there's something about being on an aircraft that can bring out the absolute worst in people. We all know that. We've been through that. And there are plenty of adults who will stand up and pull on your airplane seat to get up for leverage because we are all, for the most part, crammed in like sardines. And it makes people anxious and coming through the whole COVID thing with, with masks on and, you know, not feeling comfortable on a flight as if we ever did. I'm talking about you back, you know, in that section behind the curtain I'm trying to relate here. <laughs> but seriously, no. And if there is a more entitled family, they are going to be up in the pointy end of the plane. So yes, I can totally relate because little Olivia or Benson or whoever they're naming kids after these days, they're using their tray and changing channels on the TV on your seat back and don't realize that every time they punch that blessed button, they're they're Anyway, okay. We got off topic there. And it feels good. But anyway, that's what we do. This podcast is called Gracefully, Frankly, and Never on Topic. <laughs> so back to disciplining other people's children. And you weren't disciplining this 14-year-old who really should have known better. You're just reminding him that there is somebody else in his universe, right? And that's okay. Right. But to go back to what we were talking about, even now, when our daughter-in-law admonishes our dog, because, you know, if Dottie and Sammy are two dogs, who I hope you saw in the vlog on Monday, because they're both adorable. <laughs> if Brooke tells Dottie not to do something, she'll go, oh, oh, I'm sorry. And I'm like, what for? And she said, well, some people don't like other people talking to their dogs. And I'm like, look, we're family <laughs> and, and we do this. We're all in yes. this together. And yeah. once that has been said, it does take a village but God forbid that your village has a predator because every one of them has an idiot. Yeah. And I'm really glad that those lines have been redrawn for the most part in terms of who gets to talk to your kids. I just want to um, underline the fact that my parents did come around years later. You know, they were like other parents of the time and they were busy and they were trying to make a living. They were trying to get a business going and worried about money and all these things. And I get that now. I get it. Yeah. So it's not like I hold it against them or anything. Hey, by the way, if there's anything that we talked about here that you want to go to a safe space, I know it's social media, but our Gracefully and Frankly Facebook page is a safe space. We monitor it. We are very careful with what people say and to each other. But if there's anything you want to share or have any insight, we welcome your comments on anything Lisa has said or anything that I should have said as I was listening to this. We are always open not only to your feedback, but to your wisdom. So please go to Facebook.com slash Gracefully and Frankly, and we do welcome your input and your feedback. Yeah, absolutely. The more community gathering around talking about things like this, the more we make it acceptable to talk about it. It was not talked about for too long. So here we are and we're talking. So thanks. You know what my therapist said? My therapist said, listen to words, listen to actions more, listen to your intuition the most. And that is pretty much opposite of what I was taught, but it's a good lesson. Listen to words, listen to actions more, listen to yourself most of all. Yeah, your intuition most of all. Yep. Wow. I love that. But how do you feel having told that story? And I know that you didn't plan on telling that story. How do you feel? Um, guilty. Why? 
Well, I feel guilty because I feel like I said something that took things in a different direction. Oh, my God, no. And I feel... No, no. Yeah, it's it's an odd feeling, but it's there. I can't help it. And I appreciate you saying no. It's my truth, and it's part of something that happened. And, and I think that it's like anybody you meet or know or have heard or seen anywhere, there's stuff that happens to people that sucks that you have no idea about. It's like that Amanda Marshall song. Yeah. Everybody's got a story that'll break your heart. Was that the one? <laughs> That is the one. No, Birmingham, Birmingham. No, I'm just kidding. Oh, phew. Uh, yeah, no, no, everybody's got a story. And, you know, I dealt with it long ago and, uh, and, um, and he's dead now. And, Good. but it just sort of bubbled out of me in the moment. So there you go. I mean, this is how these things happen, right? And this is the stuff we never, ever could have talked about on the radio, you know? Oh, my goodness. Could you imagine? Yeah. God forbid we curdle someone's cappuccino on their way to work in the morning. <laughs> oh, no way. It just wouldn't have been appropriate. Yeah. But it's not something you tell somebody when you initially meet them. And that's why we're all friends. And this is a safe space. And you know what else you reminded me of? No. That anyone who at the beginning of this episode said the poor Lisa thing that you were hearing in your head has no idea what is at the root of it. And that's why we all need to just cut each other some slack and yeah, we're not even going to judge Al Pacino and Robert De Niro for, you know, being baby daddies at 80. See, we're not judging them, Lisa, because they must have some reason for their tired old sperm that have to stop at a park <laughs> bench halfway to the egg to get there. We're not even going there. See, we are not judging this week. Thank you very much, my friend. <laughs> and their girlfriends are going, what's that sound? Oh, the boys are just catching their breath. That's all. That's quite oh. right. It's, awful. it's the wheezing spermatozoa. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. But anyway, not judging. Not judging. And we are going to say goodbye for now. Thank you to you, Lisa. Especially, especially thank you to you for this. And to Envy Pillow, of course, for giving us a good night's rest when it's possible. And uh, and we'll talk to you again next time. Okay, my friend? You bet we will. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.